All right, ladies and gents, today I'm going to go over the parts of the brain with you uh, to just highlight uh, all of the different features that are on the brain, things that you guys are going to need to be able to identify on the brain. So we're going to start at the beginning with the different planes of the brain and go through all the features, highlight those so you guys have a chance to review them a couple times before your practical exam. All right, so I'm using this document cam here. It's not the greatest camera in the world, but at least you'll be able to see all the different features. Okay, so this is our brain. Right, I've got my brain cut in half. You know, we did our mid-sagittal cut this afternoon. Um, what you guys can see here are the major parts. Here's the cerebrum, the cerebellum. This is part of the midbrain down here into the spinal cord. Okay, so just to reference the planes of the brain. All right, we did our sagittal cut. So if I hold my brain up like this, right, the sagittal cut went through right here. Right, so sagittal takes it into left and right halves. So here I've got my left hemisphere, my right hemisphere has been removed. Then you can see here where the sagittal will be. Your frontal plane, right, that's where you've got it separated into front and back half, so anterior and posterior halves of the brain. So it comes down the middle here, right, and that's where you also have uh, your coronal, right? Frontal and coronal are the same. Then the other uh, side you've got here is where your horizontal plane will be. So it's going from the front to the back creating top and bottom parts of the brain. Okay, so you have to be able to tell me where the sagittal, the frontal, and the uh, horizontal planes are on the brain. Okay, The other part of the brain that you guys aren't going to really be able to see, at least in this model here, because I don't have it present anymore because we removed them, um, are the different meninges. So remember in the meninges we have three different parts of that. We've got the dura mater, and you can see a little bit of here. So the dura mater is this outer part, right? so that thick, tough layer that's durable. The arachno mater, which is here on the inside, Right? And then you've got your pia matter that's directly on the surface of the brain. So actually what I can do with my probe here is if I press gently into the sulcus up through here, you can actually see where my pia matter is going underneath. All right? So my pia matter is actually sitting on top of my probe. Okay? So that connective tissue directly on the surface of the brain. All right, another thing we talked about for features on the brain are the gyri and sulcus of the cerebrum. So if you look here you can see these indentations those represent where the sulci are and then the gyrus is the top part. So remember the brain is like a wave. All right, so you've got upper parts that are the sulcus or the upper parts of the gyrus, the lower part is the sulcus. So if we look here on the side of the brain where we did the sagittal cut you can actually see those indentations. right? So see this dip down going up, down and up, that's the gyrus and the sulcus part of the cerebrum. Okay. Uh, so those are major features of the brain there. So if we identify our parts, again, cerebrum here, cerebellum back here, it's responsible for uh, balance um, and uh, movement and coordination. We've got our midbrain here that's got our pons. So the pons, if you look on the underside, uh, is this indentation that's right here, pons. And then we have our medulla oblongata that goes down into our brain stem. Okay. All right, so those major parts of the brain. If we also look on the underside here, you guys saw this projection down here under this, under this part. This is where your pituitary gland is. So your pituitary is responsible for a lot of endocrine function. Remember your endocrine system, your hormones. Endocrine system here, that's where your pituitary gland is. Okay. Um, if we look at the underside of our brain, so again, I only have the one half of it, but we can still see everything that's present, is we had those different... Um, parts of the nerves that you guys were supposed to identify. So this upper part here, this is where the olfactory bulb is. The olfactory bulb is anterior. Think where your nose is. It's on the anterior side of your face. This olfactory region is what's responsible for carrying in senses, or your scent sense to your brain. Here we've got things that are related to the optic nerve. So my uh, connective tissue is still pretty deeply on here. Um, let's see if I can try to remove it a little bit so you can see. Not having any luck. But you can see here when we had our two parts of the brain together, we had that X-shaped structure. It was right here, so one half went off to the right hemisphere. This is from the left. This is where your optic chasm is. Optic chasm. Right, so your optic chasm uh, is where you've got the cross of the two optic nerves. This is optic nerve that's coming up here. Right, and then your optic uh, tract right, is coming down this way on the other side, right, so nerve is going up to where the eyes are, optic tract is going down below your optic chasm, down this way, so that you're actually getting this signal getting carried to the back part of your brain, okay, so that's where your occipital lobe there. All right, um, ocular motor nerve right here, so your ocular motor, it's controlling the motion of the muscles inside of your eye, so that's why it's called ocular motor, eye motion, eye movement. 
ocular motor nerve. All right, the other things we identified today is we were looking at vesicles and parts that are around the cerebellum. So we looked at the back side of the brain. We looked back here. All right, and I told you if you look underneath here where the cerebellum is, you can actually see this indentation. So now that we've done our mid uh, cut, we can actually look at that. So you see this kind of indentation right here going up this way and around. This is our fourth ventricle. All right, so fourth ventricle. We've got other ventricles we'll go to as we identify other parts, but we went to the other side here. And then we uh, and then I asked you guys to go ahead and take your cerebrum, pull this back. Um, and separate it from your cerebellum and you see these two bumps okay so you remove that connective tissue in there and you got these two bumps so you look at this upper one this is your superior right, superior colliculus c-o-l-l-i-c-u-l-u-s colliculus so the superior bump back here and then you have the inferior colliculus below that so superior colliculus inferior colliculus Okay, and those two things are between your cerebellum and your cerebrum up here. Okay. All right, the other thing that you guys need to make sure you're able to identify on the brain, and you should start with today, after we or we finish with today, um, is parts of the cerebrum. So the lobes of the cerebrum that have various functions. We're not going to go into what they do, but just know that they have different things. Uh, you got the frontal lobe. So the frontal lobe, again, is on the front of the brain. Um, and with the frontal lobe, okay, this is where a lot of like emotions come from, a lot of memory and things are associated with this part. So frontal lobe in here. Another thing I asked you guys to identify was the ansate sulcus. Okay, the ansate sulcus is actually this one that comes out this way. So it's a little bit further back from the front. Um, it's a pretty prominent indentation that kind of separates the brain in the front and back half, so if you can think about it this way. But ansate sulcus, a very large one that comes around this way. Okay, so right here. Um, the other things, the next thing, the temporal lobe. So think about your cranium and your parts of your cranium. Thus correlates to the parts of the brain. So remember your parietal bone, right, and your temporal bone, your occipital bone. Those all relate to lobes of the brain. So it's in temporal, right, on the temporal side, right. This is your temporal lobe, right. And then on the back here, this is where vision is on the occipital lobe. So frontal, occipital on the back, and the temporal lobe here, okay. If we look at the horizontal side, right, you can see the temporal lobe coming around this way. And at the top, you can see the parietal. So the parietal is in the middle. So frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. Okay, those are the, all the regions that you guys will need to know on your brain. Um, the other thing I wanted you guys to identify beyond the ansate sulcus, so again, this part that's coming down this way. All right, so up here, ansate sulcus is pretty big, coming down this way, um, was the lateral sulcus of the brain. And you can see that if you follow this down, you see this indentation this way coming back. This is your lateral sulcus. Okay, so lateral sulcus, ansate sulcus. Lateral sulcus between your temporal and your occipital lobes. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the mid-sagittal cut of our brain and identify the features here. Okay, so if I set my brain down this way, I've got my anterior side on this end, posterior side on this end. Okay, and there are different features in here, and depending upon how well you guys got your brains cut, uh, you should be able to see a lot of the features that I have here. So if you follow along in your lab guide, the terms that I'm about to use are the terms that you should highlight and make sure that you can identify on your brain. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start with this part right here. So I'm taking my probe, you can see that, and I'm going into this space right here, right? So you should be able to split it pretty easily, okay? So a ventricle, again, is a part of the space. All right, what you're seeing right here is your um, part of, sorry, this is not uh, identified correctly on your guys' lab guide. Um, so lateral um, ventricle, okay, lateral ventricle here. Uh, very large ventricle in this part of the brain. All right, if you look up here, you see this dense, thick, white matter right here. We'll identify what that is in a second, but use that as your landmark to identify um, this thing called the fornix. All right, so the fornix, if you look at it in your lab guide, all right, it's going to be this band of white tissue here that's directly below your lateral ventricle. So lateral ventricle into your fornix. Okay. After you look at your fornix, what you can do is follow your fornix down Okay, a little bit, and you're going to be able to see this indentation between 
this part, this white dense part, and then this mass of tissue right here. So this is your lateral ventricle. This is where your third ventricle is going to be. So fourth was back here. Third ventricle is right here, okay, next to that mass of tissue, okay? So that mass of tissue is where your third ventricle is. The other thing I want you guys to be able to identify is this space right here, okay? This is what we call your cerebral aqueduct. This is where a lot of your cerebral uh, fluids come through um, and go in through various parts of your brain to exchange different um, different things, uh, different nutrients and uh, waste products from your brain. All right, so this thing right here, your cerebral aqueduct. Okay, so we'll go through those again. Lateral ventricle is the space right here. Your third ventricle is here. Cerebral aqueduct is going to be in this direction. And then your fornix is this layer of tissue that's below your ventricle. Okay, so those features right there. All right, so let's identify some more structures that are in this part of the brain. So if you guys remember, we had this band that separate, connected our uh, left lobe and right lobe of our brain. So when our brain was here, the two were here, the other lobe on this side, we cut through this thing. So the band of tissue that connects the two lobes together, that is your corpus callosum. So corpus callosum. Your lab guide has it misspelled uh, in, the, in the image. It calls it the corpus callosum, but it should be corpus. Okay? And your corpus callosum, this band, is made up of different parts. Okay, so there are three parts to this that you guys need to know. The first part here, the anterior side, this curve, this is called the called genu or genu, so G-E-N-U. This part right here uh, connects to what we call the body. So body is this upper part, genu goes down here. And then if you go to this back part, all right, this is the splenium or, or splenium. Both of those are ways you can say it. So splenium, splenium, body in the center, and genu in the front those three things. Um, if we look at other uh, structures here, if you see underneath your um, splenium, right, there's a space here, you see this mass, this mass right here is called your pineal body and it's part of your endocrine system. It helps, um, it sends out a lot of different hormones to various parts of the body. So you should see this kind of distinct circular mass right in this area here. Okay, so this is your pineal body. So let's see if I can get a little bit closer for you guys to see. I'm not sure if that's going to focus. It is not. That's okay. All right. I think you can see it better from a distance. So your pineal body right here. You can next see if you go next to this. All right. Pineal body is going to be connected to this circular mass that's right here. This circular mass is next to where your third ventricle is. This is called the massa intermedia. So massa intermedia. So the reason why we call it that is because it's a me. Uh, giant mass of neural tissue that's in the medial side of your brain so or that's medial in your brain so me or massa intermedia so between different masses of tissue massa intermedia okay all right um, and the other thing I want you to be able to identify is this structure right here that's underneath your massa intermedia and this region you're gonna have what we and it's above your pituitary gland this is your hypothalamus so we talked about your hypothalamus as being important with a lot of feedback systems. It helps control body temperature, things like that. Uh, so your hypothalamus is this region. So just to go through those different parts, corpus callosum is this whole banded section here. We've got our fourth ventric or our lateral ventricle here. So genu, or genu, body, splenium, or splenium, whichever one you want to call it, uh, pineal body, massa intermedia, and your hypothalamus. So hypothalamus, massa intermedia, pineal body, here's our whole corpus callosum, this is our splenium, body, genu, all, right, all of those different parts right there. Okay, um, So those are kind of the major structures I want you guys to be able to identify in the brain, at least in this part in the midline section here, um, in the cerebrum. But let's go back and look at our cerebellum. So the last thing you guys will identify on your list is the interior section of your cerebellum. So if you follow your um, cerebral aqueduct down to your fourth ventricle and back around this way, you're going to go underneath your cerebellum. If you look in your cerebellum, you should see these distinct white and gray differences. Okay, they're very abrupt and stark. We call this the arbor vitae, right? The arbor vitae. The reason why we do that is because it I mean, it means tree of life. Literally, that's what it translates into. Uh, but arbor vitae, 
Okay, what this thing is uh, demonstrating is just kind of that how that white matter gets spread out, all right, and then those neural connections with the with the gray matter gets there. All right, so arbor vitae in the cerebellum. So you should have your cerebral aqueduct going down into your fourth ventricle here. Okay, so um, those structures right there. Okay, so the last part in your lab guide it has us doing these uh, these oblique sections in the in the brain. We're not going to do that. We're just going to stick to these major structures here. So I'm going to go through them all with you one more time, very quickly, so you can review them all. Okay, so go through the planes. Again, this is my frontal plane. All right, my sagittal plane was here. All right, my horizontal plane is on the side. Uh, dura matter, pia matter, and arachno matter. Dura matter is on the outside. Arachno matter is on the inside of that, and then your pia matter is the connective tissue directly on the brain. Gyrus and sulcus. So the gyrus is this upper part. Sulcus is the down part of this uh, of the of the folds in the cere uh, the cerebrum. Um, major structures. So cerebrum, cerebellum. Here's your midbrains, which made up your pons and medulla oblongata, and then your brain stem. Okay. Other structures, your pituitary gland here, right? and you've got your olfactory bulbs. Right? So olfactory bulbs is where you've got your uh, smell coming in. Your optic nerve right here goes to your optic chasm with that X-shaped thing that we had before we cut it, down to your optic tract that goes to the back part of your brain. We had our pituitary gland right here and our ocular motor nerve that was right here. Okay, um, We had on the back where you could follow through with the fourth ventricle coming around this way to the cerebellum. You had these structures on the inside between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Okay, so let's try to get that a good angle of that. All right, you've got your uh, superior colliculus, inferior colliculus, both of those back here between the cerebrum and the cerebellum, uh, and your fourth ventricle that went around underneath this way. Right, excuse me. Uh, parts of the cerebrum, we've got our frontal lobe, so this front part here, parietal lobe directly on top, occipital lobe in the back, temporal lobe here, and sate sulcus up here, all right, lateral sulcus back here. All right, and then if we look at the inside of our midbrain, you see our lateral ventricle. All right, you see your fornix, the layer of tissue that's underneath your lateral ventricle. You see your corpus callosum, this whole thing. All right, you got your genu, body, splenium, or uh, splenius. You have your pineal body, your massa intermedia. You've got your pituitary gland right here, just to orient you to that a little bit more. All right, third ventricle, this space behind the pineal body. Cerebral aqueduct going down into your fourth ventricle, right, and uh, your hypothalamus, right, this chunk of tissue right here. That's your hypothalamus that controls a lot of those different functions. Then back here, you've got your cere cerebellum, right, with your arbor vitae. Okay, so those are all the features of the brain. Uh, so what I would suggest you guys do is review that a couple times, watch this video to help you guys for your practical exam. I'm going to ask you many questions about different parts of the brain. This will be your last test for the nervous system before we move on to our circulatory system. So you guys have a good day and let me know if you have any questions.